Alright guys, Touch Crab back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. So much content right now around Call of Duty Vanguard. Loads of great topics to dive into today. We've got Skump versus Crim6 in one of these early kickoff tournaments, but we've also got many concerns for the pro players about some of the issues of Vanguard right after launch. Very much intriguing your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button is the best thing you can do to help this channel reach more people. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Really helps out the channel grow, all that type of good stuff. Firstly, this from Crone. Bonjour at Paris Legion. Here we are in a Game Battles tournament right here we've got donny temp decimate john and um, the rest of the guys playing red bonjour you know then we know they're going to be paris but um the clip i'll finish out the video for them with is that them getting 1v4 by rated so not exactly great for them not exactly a great start these so many as breaking point point out a load of their notable teams in these early tournaments you've got the paris team toronto etc so a fair few of the pro teams of course all want to play together but um and also we've got a london for example who clearly aren't out in the states yet they're over in it well, was clearly they're still in uh, europe somewhere because um well they're not out in the states yet ready to go for this like a lot of the other teams are so already London falling behind not just in terms of announcement speed but also in terms of early practice in the game but um a load of challenges teams as well potentially playing here we've got spacely nameless study and embos what a team that is but um I mean yeah lots of potential here for some of these squads but certainly a lot of uh, well changes going on in the challenger scene already this I thought was kind of funny from Krona challenger story where a few days ago now Morks confirmed his team then a few days after that he then confirmed that wasn't going to be the case of the team actually needed one and then they got Nero poison in as their fourth and then Nero decided to move to another team and they did another fourth so um, this is just classic right like roster media happens every single time of day really in the challenger side and yeah Morks uh, finding himself and needing another team yet again on that side of things this also I thought was kind of interesting right modern warzone because um in warzone if you slide cancel a couple of times then you can uh, well tax sprint for forever and um I don't know apparently this isn't quite the case anymore or it's somewhat different I haven't got the opportunity to hop on quite yet so I'll give it a go later today but um I mean yeah well, I guess we'll see how things go but uh, maybe a step in the right direction here in terms of not having to completely smash your buttons all left right and center this then is the unofficial as of right now cdl rule sets per the custom games so if you go into customs you select that the cdl rule sets this is what comes up now um this is maybe what they've decided to do at least so far based on the, what the developers think and maybe also the pros they could have um you know well, contacted the pros on this type of stuff and generally they seem to make pretty intelligent decisions so shotguns lngs riot shield obviously launchers they're all bad silencers are gone subsonic and incendiary ammo are all restricted which also makes sense so let's talk about perks ghost and dauntless are gone the rest of them are allowed tracker high alert forward intel piercing vision are restricted engineer is allowed demolition overkill tactician are restricted the other ones are allowed so kind of expected stuff really here in um in well in these perks vicinities we've also got the lethal side which um, when we talk about kill streaks it gets kind of interesting but um you've got the throwing bomb thermite demolition charge and molotov all restricted which um i think makes sense really because i forget what game it was maybe it was modern warfare where the molotov was allowed at the start it was really frustrating to deal with and they get rid of that. Now we've got the frag and the gammon bob. I don't know what the gammon bob is. It sounds hilarious. I know um, Shotzi has no idea how to pronounce it. I'm pretty sure Shotzi was trying to say gammon bob, and it, I don't know. He said it like gammon bob or something, but I thought that was funny anyway. In terms of tactical, the stim shot, of course, is gone. Gas grenade, S mine, decoy restricted. Stun and smoke grenade allowed for now. So whether the smoke ends up getting GA'd or the pros decide not to use it, for now, smoke is good to go. So um, I guess that's a good sign. But um, I mean, still, we don't really know who came up with this rule set, right? Is it just the devs deciding, like, someone who watches competitive this is probably a good rule set as i think it pretty much is but um or is it actually the pros have had some input on this right and have decided okay we're going to keep smoked in for now and see how they go of course in terms of kill streaks it's pretty similar to what we saw back in the day glide bomb at strafing run which is exactly what we saw back in world war ii and uh, the bombing run as well are the only three allowed the other 13 restricted so already kind of a good sign here happy to see kill streaks back in action but um kill streaks maybe not working 100 percent as we'll look at here in just a couple of seconds supplied box and dead silence are the other two allowed the other seven are restricted in field upgrades so i guess that kind of makes sense as well let's talk about this then real quick so the number one player of the cold war season of course goes to simp i mean the stats on this guy are absolutely out of control not just the stats though just the eye test his awareness of the map like his stats come from the fact that he always positions himself so well he shoots incredibly straight but um he's also an incredibly aware player and like a great well honestly a great communicator on the team as well from what i've heard so it's just um it's just astonishing what this guy does on the regular basis like the stats here you guys can just feast your eyes on are just astonishing over the course 
course of a season, especially this one. I thought this was just ridiculous. Control defending KD is a 1.48. So when he's on defense and control, he has a 1.5 KD. Like, I know that on raid, he was just ridiculous on control on that map. And it seems like on all the other maps as well. I thought it was just absurd. Versus the top three teams, I guess, um, versus the other top three outside of phase, he has a 1.31 just straight up in control. SD KD and wins a 1.32. Like, um, these stats for his role are just absolutely ridiculous. Like, uh, reminiscent really to some degree of scum back in the, well, jetpack era when he was doing this with the SMG. It was just completely shocking to the entire world and no one else could compete. Seems like that kind of right now for Simp. But, um, I mean, of course, uh, well, all could change into next year. Hopefully, they get some better competition. Speaking of Simp, real quick, I thought this was kind of interesting from Easy Mac that they apparently have some sort of buddy spawn system in this game, kind of like squad spawns. We haven't had much talk yet about how it's going to play for respawn, but, um, yeah, maybe some sort of buddy spawn system, kind of maybe similar to squad spawns that we saw in Modern Warfare. That means you kind of spawn on your teammates rather than uh, with perception to where the rest of the players on the map are. And where the particular hard point is, then, um, yeah, maybe some concerns on that front for how things are going. But Sim says they could potentially change things over time. Also, some issues about this from Clayster. I mean, this came out actually during the um, the reveal, the world premiere, whatever it was, they did a couple of days ago. That um, effectively the game crashed in the middle of the in the middle of the broadcast. And Clayster tweeted this out like, oh my god, Scatter Rivera is back, baby. And apparently it is already back. So this is the thing. Like, uh, this comes out from Crimson that I thought was hilarious. Like, um, this guy cannot be stopped. He might even, I don't know if he's going to catch a fine for this, but I thought it was funny anyway. Like, um, he tweets this image out with him right up close to the camera, talking about, um, as he says, crash handler for Call of Duty Vanguard. So, Scanner Repair effectively is back. I'm not going to read the entire thing up, but you guys can tell what it says. You know, two years, yeah, we, we got the phase guys running rampant, you still can't fix Scanner Repair, but you can, um, yeah, hit us with the test 70 times in four months. Absolutely shameless. So, um, they're kind of, I don't know, like, who he's exactly calling out it. Maybe the C Delta, some degree. Maybe the game itself are not fixing Scanner Repair. But, um, yeah, certainly guys like Crimson's not happy with it. Well, the situation is it transpires in Vanguard. Also, some other issues with the game as well. But he's ready to go. John Thick tonight at 11 p.m. when the game launches. Definitely, um, yeah, Crim's on the right path. You just absolutely love to see it. But anyway, this was very funny. I woke up and I tuned into Shotzi stream. I was like, okay, what's going on? The very first map I watched was that was the Dallas Optic team versus the Subliners, right? This is um already going to be one of the matchups of the year. Right? Crim and Clay versus the Optic guys. Of course, um, well, Crim Six versus his old teammates on the Dallas side, but also against Scump. It's just an absolutely fantastic storyline. Of course, loads of streams coming out as a result of this, and two incredibly entertaining clips as a result. Firstly, this one that came out. For some reason, I don't know what this glitch is, but apparently there's some glitch where um, during the game, you can hear the audio in-game of like the lobby before the game started. So you can hear on Scum stream, like Crimzix starts speaking in the game chat middle of the game, but it's clearly not like what he's saying. It's, it's not like a, a live listening at the comms, because um, he's talking about Deadpool or something. But um, I don't know, like the ghost of Crimzix seems to be haunting Scum right here. But also there was another clip that came out after this, well, after this kind of series finished, but um, it was, uh, well, on the other map they played on Castle right here, where Crimsix ends up clutching a nice 1v2 against Ilian Shotzi, his former teammates, to win the game, and then it goes absolutely rogue in classic Crimsix fashion. Get the, well, you know how it goes, out of IGB, he says. It's, um, well, Crimsix already looking pretty good early on for this Vanguard title, and I mean, they, they win this game 6-2 in the end to take down the Opti guys. And it was kind of funny, really, because as soon as this started, I typed in Shotzi's chat something like, I hope Crim comes in game chat, right, to talk to him trash or something after he clutches around, and guess what happens as soon as the game ends. Staying in? Are you trying to out movement me? Suck my dick! <laughs> Suck my dick! Huh? Ten bomb. Oh, guys, we're so fing good, guys! 25,000 viewers can't even beat us? <laughs> you. Get the fk out of my GB fing vessel one. Bitches. <laughs> There was also plenty of other disgusting clips coming out. For example, this one that Clayser, well, Dirk initially tweeted out of Hydra just completely finessing in this same map. I mean, um, yeah, this guy's movement already looks pretty disgusting. Like, he's making some great plays. I mean, look at this. It's just phenomenal movement stuff. And, well, Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne says Clayster is pretty mind-blown at the team that he has managed to put together once again. This other was funny as well. Tiny Terror's Law, you know, we win a lot, all this type of stuff. But Crim and Clay Law, they go back a, you know, go back a very long time to, um, yeah, all the way back in the, well, all the way back in the day on Complexity Ride to today. And, of course, that well, lots of success together as well. But um, yeah, we'll have to see how New York fare this season. Very entertaining team, I'm sure, at least early on in this stuff. Also, some issues, though, with the game. Firstly, this one, Clayster. Any fix for streaks not working at mid-CDL rounds? So some issues with this, apparently, like, um, this is just kind of the things that happen when the game launches, right? That there's some sort of glitches that happen where streaks don't come in, and um, it's kind of strange. But um, of course, Clayster's still getting some streaks early on, so you've got to be happy about that if you're a New York fan. But um, I guess this is something they will fix over time. Also, this that Machilla talked about, that um, on this map, 
Tusken. For whatever reason, you keep getting these skips around the map. You can see right here, like, it's skipping for him. And, um, I don't know what exactly the issue is right here. But, um, pretty impossible to play this and deal with this when you're getting these skips. And as Asti says, anyone, anyone else keep getting these skips on Tusken? Straight up couldn't get a kill. Apparently, Standy says this is something you can do to fix it. But he says it was off anyway, so not too much to happen. You know, it's a server thing, I believe, happened to me. So I don't really know what's going on here. But, um, clearly, some issues with the game. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. But you guys know how it is. This also from John Prosper, right? This is what it seems like the end well, the Coldcaster is going to look like. This looks incredibly familiar, right? Is this not exactly the same as what we saw in Cold War? I think probably it pretty much is. So, um, I mean, you know, I'm not complaining about that, to be honest. Like, Cold War was, was pretty damn nice, to be honest. And um, usually at the start of the game, we get a disgusting looking Coldcaster that takes ages. But uh, loads of good things, like some new features, rotate, aerial camera, like, I don't know, a lot of good things here. Like, um, I don't know, everything I see about this game makes me think we're in for a good year. So definitely um, some exciting stuff. Rotate the third person camera if you wanted to use it. I don't know, there's a lot of good stuff they could do, I'm sure, with the Coldcaster this year, and um, seems like the game is already kind of well tailored and getting ready to go. But just to finish out with this clip up against the new Paris squad, Rated, who seems to be kind of wanting to return to competitive play from playing Warzone for the last year or so, and he clutches a nice little 1v4 here on this Kavu 2, Gava 2 battle, whatever exactly people are calling it. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit in the like button, tell us the YouTube gods this is a good video. Others like you should see it as well, and I've got the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you watching as always. Take care. I don't want to see you next time. Nice. The other two are flanking. One was in fire. I'm I'm right I don't know Ooh, where that's at. It'll be like Deadpool. Without what the, the f I'm getting cr I'm hearing Krim. Hey, Same my... pack. Wait, what the f What the hey, Wait. The glex, you're good. Dude, let's let you on that smoke. Come on, man. John, you're like, stop ring. Oh, fucking smoke. Good play. Two in ring. One more. Nice. Nice. Shit. There's two on bomb. By bomb. Hello, Donnie. Both slow airs. One's pushed up, I think, more towards the bunker already. There's someone out there, right? Maybe. Nice. He's on mid. I think he's like yeah, mid or something. Like, you can, you can oh, the you bomb. got it. You got it. The bomb is he's above you, above you somewhere. Heard him.